If you have your Bibles, if you could turn with me to Mark 10, 46. That's where we'll be at this morning. If you need a Bible, if you want to just raise your hands, we'd love to get you a Bible um, and put it in your hands so you can follow along with us today. And Mark 10, 46. Have you ever made a, a last ditch effort? Maybe a, 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 a desperation final attempt. May, one, one moment that comes into my mind um, when I think about it was in elementary school. And I remember, I remember it vividly in my mind. It was, uh, it was a filled day. I, was, I think I was in like fifth or sixth grade. And uh, I remember we come to this point in the, in the field day. It's like the end of the day. And it's my favorite part. It's the 40-yard dash. And here I am. I, uh, I, I'm ready to run. You know, I wanted to prove to everyone that I was, that I was fast. Uh, growing up, I, I loved to, to run and to be fast. And, and so here we are. We're off to the races. I'm running. And uh, I'm thinking that I'm doing pretty good. And then all of a sudden, I catch in the corner of my eye somebody else that was was at the same place where I was at. And this, this person was actually a girl on the other side of me. And she was, me and her were neck to neck. We were running as fast as we could. And so I, I thought to myself, what could I do? I, I'm running as fast as I could. And I, I'm thinking to myself, what could I do? You know, so as any boy would have done, um, I didn't trip her or I didn't, uh, I didn't put a, I didn't um, try to, to push her out of the way. But what I did do is I, I went into a full dive. Um, at the end of the finish line, to find, to find myself co- coming up short to the end, I finished, she beat me, and I went, I went away defeated. Um, and so this is the, uh, uh, my, my, uh, my thought of a, of a last-ditch effort. Um, well, in the passage this morning, we come to this point in Mark, in Mark 10, 46, that we'll meet a man named Bartimaeus, who unlike, this, who unlike my story was victorious in the ending as he makes a, his last desperate effort to encounter Jesus as he is passing by. So our, our big idea this morning is that we're saved and we're healed by our faith in Jesus Christ. We're saved and healed by our faith in Jesus Christ. Let's read in Mark ten forty six. Now they came to Jericho. And as he went out to Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude... Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And so Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for... God, this time that we have together, we thank you, Lord, that that you would uh, that you would be here with us, that you've been here, God, and your name is being exalted. And Lord, as we open your word this morning, we pray that you would speak to us. You say it in your word, God, that you're like like a, 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 a sword. It's quick and it's sharp and powerful and it's sharper than any two edged sword. And it it pierces to the dividings asunder of our soul and our spirit. Lord, and it discerns our, the thoughts and the intents of our heart. And so we pray, God, that your word, God, would be active today. We pray that your word, Lord, even as I speak, that you would speak to your people today through your word. And so we give you this time, God. We pray that your spirit would lead us today and that you would be glorified in all that we do. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to be, be looking at this section in, in three parts this morning. Knowledge of Jesus. Cry out to Jesus and faith in Jesus. In last week's passage, Jesus and his disciples are approaching Jerusalem. Jesus once again has predicted his death before his disciples for the third time, 
reminding him that he is going to be betrayed. He's going to be persecuted. He's going to be uh, delivered into the hands of, of, of Gentiles. And he was going to rise again. That he reminded also the disciples about the, what it means to be the greatest in the kingdom. That those who, who follow his example and are servants of all are those who are greatest in the kingdom of God. Last week I actually misspoke. I said that, that sin is a, a free gift. And sin is not a free gift. So I, I say this, that I meant to say that salvation is a free gift. Romans 6.23 says that, that for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is the eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so as we dive in this morning, our, our hearts and our desires for us to, to look at this passage, that, to see what is God speaking to us. What is God trying to communicate to us through His Word? Today we, we see Jesus is full of mercy. And so let's jump in in, in in Mark 10, 46. And it says, Now they came to Jericho, and as they went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And so here we are. The, Jesus and his disciples are traveling through. They're making their way to Jerusalem. And here they find themselves. They're on the outskirts of Jericho, is what it, what it says. And Jericho, if you don't know, is 18 miles away from Jerusalem. That Jesus, as we've talked about in the last few weeks, that Jesus is on His way to Jerusalem, where He will give His life on the cross. That this city, Jericho, was a major city on the edge of the Judean wilderness. From Jericho, they would, be, they would make a 3,500-foot climb to Jerusalem where Jesus would, would give up His life. And, and this is the, the last healing here in the, in the Gospel of Mark that is recorded. That it's interesting as we think about what's being described to us is that it's significant and it's important to see all the details that were given. We're given this man's name. His name is Bartimaeus. We know that he is blind. We know that he is he is a beggar and he's sitting on the road. But there's so many that are, are traveling to Jerusalem here at this time. That many would have been on their way to, to celebrate the Passover. That there were hundreds if not thousands of people that are, are coming along with the disciples and Jesus as Jesus is, is making his way into Jerusalem. What we know in verse 46 is that the writer also tells us that there was a, a great multitude and Jesus, the miracle worker, was on, was on his way with the crowd along with the disciples. That we're told this man's name is Bartimaeus and he was the, the son of Timaeus. Matthew also tells us that there was, was also another, another man that was with Bartimaeus. who is not named, but he was also blind. But Mark, as we dive into this, is wanting to give us, is wanting us to, to focus our attention on Bartimaeus, who, is, who probably was more vocal than, all, than the other blind men. So we see that, that Bartimaeus is on the road and he is, he's begging. He's begging on the road. That he's blind and he, he can't see. And, and we know that he, he's, he, he, he can't see anyone around him. But we know that he can hear everything that's going on around him. So you, you could imagine as, as, as Jesus is making his way with the crowd that it's very loud. And, and Bartimaeus knows something is going on. That Bartimaeus was on the road begging. He had no sight. He could not see. And what we know about Bartimaeus is that he was helpless. That he couldn't help himself. That Bartimaeus was, was unremarkable. That Bartimaeus couldn't provide for himself because he was blind. So he's on the road begging for help. That he also didn't have status or anything that would, would attract favor. 
that most people probably wanted to, to avoid Bartimaeus. And there he was begging, asking people for help. He probably didn't realize that, that Jesus would be, would be coming near to him as he's traveling down the road, as Jesus is traveling. I think what's, what's incredible to think of is that, is that God knew. Is that God knew that, that, that Jesus would be coming at that moment, at that right time, right down the, the place where Bar- Bartimaeus would be. And I think it's so often intriguing to think about God's purpose and God's sovereignty. That God is not in heaven thinking about how is he going to react and how is he going to do certain things. But God is sovereign over everything in this earth. And as Bartimaeus is, is sitting on the road, Jesus is getting ready to make his way right beside him. Verse 47 says, and when, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. That we're told that it, it was at this time when Jesus was going to Jericho that Bartimaeus hears of it, he catches wind of it, and he is told that Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And for Bartimaeus, you see that that's all that Bartimaeus needed to hear. That he began to cry out, and, he, and, he, and as, as, as it says, that he says, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. That Son of David is a, is a messianic title. And by Bartimaeus declaring this, he was, he was really expressing his faith in Jesus. That he has a a knowledge of Jesus, that somehow he heard of Jesus, that he heard that Jesus is is able to heal, that he heard that Jesus was near, that he had a knowledge of Jesus, and that this was a, a, a messianic declaration of who Jesus was. It was also a, a plea of, of deliverance. Here, here Bartimaeus was, was humbly crying out. To Jesus. He was crying out for mercy. I like to think of it as, as he was lifting up like an SOS. You know, it's like an, an emergency call. And I think what's so, what's so impactful for this, if you can just imagine this in, with your eyes and visualize that here Bartimaeus is, he's sitting on the road, he can't see anything, but he hears that Jesus is coming by. And so what does he do? The only thing that he can do, he uses his voice and he declares to Jesus who he is. Jesus, son of, son of David, have mercy on me. Psalm 34, 18 says, the, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Luke 18, 13 says, and the, and the tax collector standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. What we need to know about this this verse here is that that Jesus is is giving an example of, of prayer and the prayer that is heard by God. That who's also praying in this account is that there's a Pharisee that's also praying to God. And the Pharisee is actually saying, God, I thank you that I'm not like these adulterers. God, I'm thank you, I thank you that I'm not like these extortioners. God, you see that I, I fast two times a week. The Pharisee is saying this. But here the, the tax collector cries out, to, cries out to God and he says, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He beats his breast. And Jesus goes on to say that this is the prayer that is heard in heaven. The prayer for the one that, that realizes his insufficiency. The one that realizes that he needs God's mercy. That he doesn't even want to look to heaven. That he beats his breast and he says, God, have mercy on me. There's something about mercy. That as we see it throughout Scripture, that God responds to, to showing mercy to those who ask for it. To those who, 
who are broken hearted, to those who confess and express their need for, for mercy. Here we have Bartimaeus and he's, he's crying out for the mercy of Jesus. What is, what is mercy? Mercy is, is pity. Mercy is compassion for the miserable. In fact, mercy's object is misery. And so we could say that this, this man is in, is in misery. He's blind and he's, he's crying out for the, to the God of mercy. That he's crying out to, to Jesus who is full of compassion. And I believe that it's, it's not until we get to, get to this point of, of crying out to God. Maybe you've never put your faith and your hope in Jesus. But I believe that it's not until we get to the end of ourselves and we cry out to God and we say, God, I need you, God. I can't, go in, I can't do this anymore on my own. That God responds and He reveals Himself to us in our lives. But we talked about this idea last week that, that, that we must realize our, our poor state, our bankruptcy before the Lord, to realize that, that even though we may have it think what we, what we perceive to be figured out on the outside, everything seems to be going our way, everything seems to be happening, we must realize that, that we're bankrupt and that we're poor in spirit in order for us to realize our need for Jesus. And it's not until we understand that we realize that that we're bankrupt before God. When it comes to to righteousness, when it comes to our sin that has separated separated us from God. That we have nothing in ourselves to to make us right before God. I said this before and Isaiah says that that our righteousness is is as filthy rags before the Lord. It's not until we understand and it's not until we realize our need that we raise our voice and we say, God, I need you. That Bartimaeus realized his, his need for Jesus. I love the story of, of the, the prodigal son. The Bible says that he, was, that he asked for his inheritance before his father died. And so he, the Bible declares that he squandered everything he had on, on wild living. And he gets to the point where he, he finds himself in the pig's pen. And he's at a place of, of desperation. He's at a place of, of realizing that he starts thinking to himself, man, I, I have it so much better in my father's house. That even if I were to be just a servant in my father's house, it would be so much better. And he, and he gets to the, to the end of himself and he realizes, you know what, I'm going to go to my father, I'm going to repent, and I'm going to ask my father to receive me and let me be a, a hired servant in his house. And I love the picture that if you read it, it's in Luke 15, it, it says that the father runs to him. What a picture that, that God responds to our cries, that God responds to our cry for mercy. The Bible says that, that he met him with compassion and he runs to him and he receives him and he restores him and he calls for a feast to happen. This is what happens when those who, who come to the end of themselves and they realize that, that they can't make it in their own selves. That they need God's intervention in their lives. prodigal son came to the to the end of himself and he longed for the mercy of his father and we hear and we read that the father was open and ready to receive and to to give and extend his compassion and so we he, we see here in this picture with Bartimaeus he's crying out to Jesus he's saying Jesus have mercy on me so we have a knowledge of Jesus and we have a cry out to Jesus verse 48 Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. Look at how it look how this all unfolds. Bartimaeus is crying out to Jesus. Those who are are nearby him are quiet, are are telling him to, to be quiet. 
to quit making a scene. They're, they're telling him to, to shut up. Maybe they were, were uncomfortable with the noise that was coming out of Bartimaeus. Maybe they didn't think that Jesus had time for this man. Besides, Jesus is, is on His way to Jerusalem. He has a mission. He has a plan. Leave Him alone. Let Him do what He needs to do. Don't you realize that, that He has more important things to attend to? I think is what's going through their mind. Jesus is headed to Jerusalem. The religious leaders, the, the scribes and the Pharisees are, are waiting to convict Jesus. They're waiting to seize Him. They're waiting to arrest Him. But what does Bartimaeus do? Scripture tells us that he, he cried out all the more. It doesn't stop Bartimaeus. It actually makes him shout even more. The Bartimaeus doesn't care about, he is not concerned about making friends. That he knows this is, this is Jesus and he knows that this is his opportunity to get his attention. And so he cries out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. That in this story, it could be, be tempting for us to, to make Bartimaeus the, the hero of the story based on his courage to go against the crowd in his desperation. But I would submit to us that, that Jesus is the hero of the story. That Jesus is, is always the, the hero of the story. That Jesus is, is full of mercy. That Jesus is full of compassion. That Jesus loves this man. That Jesus cares for Bartimaeus. That he isn't a, a respecter or a, a respecter of status or prestige. But Jesus does recognize the, the man's cry and his plea for mercy. Look at what it says in verse 49. So Jesus stood still, and he commanded him to be called. Jesus stood still. The crowd and the people were, were sushing. We're trying to shush Bartimaeus. Now they're saying, wait a second. Actually, get up, get up. Cheer up. He's actually calling you. Jesus is calling you. Then they called the blind man saying to him, be of good cheer, rise. For he is calling you. I think here in this Bartimaeus, I think that we see that that if we really look hard, that we can really see ourselves in Bartimaeus. That we can see that, that we are very much like him. That we aren't, aren't remarkable. That many of us will probably never be added to history books. That many of us are not significant when it comes to net worth. But like Bartimaeus, we also have need have a need. That we need Jesus to, to intervene in our lives. That in fact, we, we don't have the power to, to save ourselves. That we can't atone for our sins. That we're actually helpless apart from the mercy and the grace of God. I think one of my, my favorite prayers is, is simply, Lord, help me. Sometimes you get to the point where you don't know what to pray for, you don't know what to do, and that you just lift up a prayer and you say, Lord, help me. And I see this is the, the picture of Bartimaeus as he's calling out to Jesus. As he's calling out for mercies, as he's calling out for Jesus to, to rescue him. And I love this, that Jesus hears him, that he, that he stands still. And he tells him that he's, he's ready to see him. That here is Jesus on his way to Jerusalem. 
And he's ready to, to, to stop what he's doing. He's ready to, to stop in the road so he can help Bartimaeus. So he can show and have compassion on him. What a picture this is. What a picture that, that Jesus knows his struggle. That Jesus knows his, his loneliness. That when we think about our lives and we think about our path in our lives, that Jesus is perfectly acquainted with it. That Jesus knows it. In Hebrews it talks about that, that Jesus is our great high priest. That he sympathizes with our, our weaknesses. And that I don't know where, where some of you are this morning that maybe, maybe the enemy has tried to, to sow, lives into, sow lies into your life to, to get you to be discouraged, to get you to think that, that you're all alone, that you're all by yourself in this. But I believe, I believe through this story we can recognize that all throughout the, the Gospel of Mark as we've seen that, that Jesus is faithful to show Himself strong to those who cry out to Him. That Jesus is ready to, to intervene in our lives. That Jesus is ready to, to do what He needs to do to, to help us in our situations. That we need Jesus to, to rescue us. That we need God's mercy and grace to, to come to our rescue. That we need the mercy of Jesus the Messiah. And I love this picture as we, as we look at Bartimaeus that Jesus came for the hopeless. We just read it last week for verse, verse 45, 1045, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom for many. And here it is again that Jesus is, is demonstrating that He's ready to, to intervene, that He's ready to, to serve and not to be served. That Jesus has come for the, for the outcasts. That Jesus comes to us at just the right time. Look what it says, verse 50, And, and throwing aside His garment, He rose and He came to Jesus. And you have to picture this, that here's blind Bartimaeus, his cloak or his garment is something that, that keeps him covered. It's something that's important for him. In fact, since he's a blind man, maybe he's able to collect money in it. It means something It's important for him, but notice what he does. He throws it off to the side and he gets up and he, and he goes and he meets Jesus. The cloak was, was a it provided warmth and protection from the elements of weather. But he doesn't care. Because Jesus has called him. So we have the, the knowledge of Jesus. We have a cry out to Jesus. And now the, the faith, faith in Jesus. Verse 51. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. If you remember, if you, if you remember last week, this is the, the same question that Jesus asked James and John. What do you want me to do for you? And we know how, how that ended, how that <laughs> happened after that. That Jesus rebukes James and John, but Jesus once again asked Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? That I think in this, that, that Jesus is giving Bartimaeus an opportunity to express his need. That he calls Jesus Rabboni, which, which is, this is the title that Mary Magdalene uses in the garden at the empty tomb. It's a, it's a personal title. It means, my Lord, my great master. He's crying out to Jesus. He's expressing his faith in Jesus. Surely this is a, a moment that Jesus is demonstrating the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And this is Jesus, the mighty and wonderful, 
that He's full of compassion, that He's full of mercy, and He's ready to demonstrate it to this man. Jesus is, is ready to meet this man's need. And I just think of it, how wonderful it is that we have in Jesus Christ somebody that, that perfectly can relate with us. Someone that perfectly knows our struggle. That He knows our, our weaknesses. That He knows the things that, that nobody else knows in our life. The things that we struggle with. The things that, that the enemy speaks to us about. That we have in Jesus someone who is, is perfectly able to relate to us. To bear with us. And how wonderful it is to know that not only does Jesus know our needs, but that He has the power to meet our needs. There's nothing that, that He is not able to do. That there's no one outside of Jesus' reach. Can we understand that? Can we grasp that this morning that it doesn't matter where you find yourself in? It doesn't matter how far it looks like you're gone. That Jesus is able to reach you. That Jesus is able to, to reveal Himself to you like He's revealing Himself to this man. That Jesus is superior and He's supreme. And I think for some of us in our lives that when the, 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 the struggle seems so great, in fact, it seems like it's so much for us to, to comprehend that that's all that we can think about in our lives. It's all that, that we can worry about in our lives that, that God is wanting to, to demonstrate to us that He is greater than anything that we experience in this life. Verse 52, Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Matthew tells us that, that Jesus had compassion and he touched both men's eyes and immediately they were, they were able to see. And I love this, what, what Jesus tells Bartimaeus is, in Mark is, your faith has made you well. Bartimaeus had, had placed his faith in Jesus. That he directed his, his trust in the Savior and the only one who could help him. Daniel Aiken says this, when, when Jesus refers to the man's faith, Jesus is not saying that the, the man has earned anything. Grace is, is, divine, is the divine hand that extends healing. And faith is the human hand that reaches out and receives it. And the object of our faith is crucial. And we talked about that. That anyone who, who places their faith and their hope in Jesus has placed their faith in, a, in the direction that is the only direction that is able to save them. The statement in, in verse 52 to, that says to, that your faith has made you well it actually translates the meaning saved. It literally means Saved you. Your faith has saved you. And I believe that Jesus is, is telling Bartimaeus that your faith has saved you and made you well. That I think that day that Bartimaeus left and he received his physical and his spiritual healing. That his sight was restored. That he could immediately see. And look what he does. Look what We've been talking about this the last few weeks about what a disciple looks like. The cost of discipleship. The cost of, of following Jesus and what that looks like. And it says that immediately that he received his sight and what did he do? He followed Jesus on the road. What a, what a beautiful picture of, of God rescuing, of God saving, of God healing. And this man he doesn't want anything else 
but to follow Jesus. He follows Jesus on the road, and and this is what faith does. That faith puts their trust and their faith in Jesus, and it, it follows Him wherever He goes. That I'm sure there were, were other things that this man could have went, this, this man could have done. There were other places that he probably could have went. But there was only one thing that he chooses to do, and he chooses to, to follow Jesus. That we don't know how long he was blind. We don't know what we, we don't know that too much more about his backstory, but what we do know is that he was captivated by Jesus. That those who have have been saved, that those who have been delivered from their old life and have been rescued from sin are no longer in bondage to the old life. And this morning as we consider this passage, as we think about what God is, is speaking to us, that I believe that we are, are very much like Bartimaeus. That we all may not be physically blind. But we are all spiritually blind. And it's only Jesus who can open our eyes. That it's only Jesus that can demonstrate and show mercy to us for our eyes to be opened. That like Bartimaeus, that we need His mercy. That we need our hearts and our spiritual eyes to be be opened by the great physician. Look at this, 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says, For it is God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, and who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. What is it saying is that that we need His glory to shine in our hearts. That each one of us that that hasn't put their faith and their trust, the Bible describes us that we're in in spiritual darkness. That we need Jesus to and His glory to shine in our hearts. That if you've never seen Jesus like this, That my prayer this morning is that you would ask Jesus to reveal Himself to you now. That this is our hope and our confidence in Jesus Christ. That we need Jesus to give us spiritual sight for us to see. That we need to be able to to behold the, the glory of God that is in the face of Jesus. And that you would realize that that Jesus is the treasure and our our great reward. That when you put your faith and your trust in Jesus, that you put your faith and trust in the only one who's able to, to save you and rescue you. So as we conclude this this morning, as this new week begins, may we can consider what needs you have. And know that, that Jesus already knows your needs. That may we, we say it out loud to Him. That may we talk to Him and let Him know that, that we may let Him know your need and your trust in Him. That we would surrender our, our situations to Jesus and that we would keep our eyes fixed on Him. Because He will never fail us. May we know that he's, He is not far away. And that there's no one that is outside of His reach. Hebrews 7.25 says, Therefore, He is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through Him, since He always lives to make intercession for them. Just think about that, about that, that this morning. That Jesus right now is, is making intercession for you. That He's interceding for you, that you would move forward, that you would press forward in faith, that you would not give in to temptation, but that you would press forward and keep your eyes fixed and focused on Him. 
And I think for us, that we would also realize that God wants to use us like He used Jesus to be His hands and His feet. That there's people in our lives that that need God's mercy. And that God wants to use us to, to demonstrate that mercy in their lives. That if we realize that, that we have received mercy from God, that God has showed Himself, that if you put your faith and your, your trust in Jesus, that God is, has saved you, that God has forgiven your sins, and that He wants us to extend mercy to others, and to show His love to others. May we call out to Him today. Romans ten thirteen says, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. With everyone's eyes closed, I'm going to give a, an opportunity for those who have never put their hope and their faith in Jesus. That you've heard the message, that you've seen, that you can relate with Bartimaeus, that you recognize that that you've tried it in your own self, that you've tried to do things your own way, and that you don't want to try to do it anymore anymore on your own self. That today, that as we've seen through Scripture, that that Jesus came to to meet your deepest need. That Jesus came to, to give His life as a ransom for you. And so this morning, if you've never put your hope and your faith in Jesus, and you would like to do that this morning, I would just ask you just to, to, just to put up your hand this morning. When we think about the cross and we think about what, what Jesus has done, thank you, I see you. When we think about what Christ has done in our lives, that He's went to the cross, that He's put His everything down on the line, that He gave His very best for us, that the Bible says that our, our sins have separated us from God. And this morning, if that's you and you want your sins to be forgiven and you want to have new life in Jesus, just go ahead and keep your hand raised this morning. I want to lead you in a prayer this morning. Can we all just say this? Say, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the cross and for paying the high price for our sins. We acknowledge that Jesus came to this earth to die for our sins. We acknowledge that we're sinners and that we need Jesus in our lives. Take away my sins and help me to love you and to trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. So, Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for those who, who put your, their faith and trust in you. We thank you, God, that you hear us. And, Lord, we thank you that you are our great high priest, that we can come to you, that we can offer our lives and our, our hopes and our cares and our struggles to you, God, and know that you're with us. And so I pray, God, that this morning that we would be encouraged to, to lift up our voices and to cry out to you and to know that you're with us today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.